Spoilers ahead for Primal, Episode 1. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest at this point. Gendy Tartakovsky, he can do no wrong. He's one of, if not the best, creator of all time. Everything he's done hits after hits after hits after hits. Dexter Slap, Samurai Jack, 2D Star Wars The Clone Wars, Symbiotic Titans, and now Primal. And he has a new show coming out soon called Unicorn, Warriors Eternal. Primal was honestly a great watch. It was genuinely a great watch. It sucks that HBO Max only has the first five episodes and you have to go to Adult Storm's website to watch the other five episodes for free. Like, just, just send them over to HBO Max as well. Like, just, just do it. But on a more positive note, it's so good that it's already been renewed for season two. Maybe it comes out this October? Maybe not? Question mark, question mark? <laughs> Primal is an adult sum animated series created by Gendy Tartakovsky. If you've seen Samurai Jack, you know Gendy tends to let the action tell the story, but unlike Jack, there's barely any dialogue in the show minus yelling and roaring. In an interview with Polygon, Gendy talked about wanting to make something surreal, something gritty that you can look at and enjoy the art that's shown. He says that the visceral visuals should be enough to tell the story he wants to tell in the 20 minute format that the show has. He wants to be seen as an all time great director, kind of like a Hayao Miyazaki. And with Primal, I honestly think he's on the right path. The question is, why do I love Primal? And if, you should watch it as well. And I'm going to be mainly paying attention to the first episode of Primal, so you can go off and watch the rest of it on your own because no spoilers here except for the first episode no spoilers here except for the first episode go ahead and subscribe so we can get started the episode starts off with us getting a good view of spear while he's fishing the spear um, if you guys actually continue to watch this series, you'll soon find out that most situations can be ended with either a rock or the said spear. <laughs> After getting a good amount of fish, Spear decides, Oi! Better get back to the good old family, mates. Oh, I really miss them so, so much, eh? So that's exactly what he does. Wait! Oh, God. Oh, God. That was close. That was close. That was close. He... He almost got caught by that pterodactyl. He almost got caught by that pterodactyl. Luckily, there was a tree that he could hide in. Something that you'll realize at this point is that there is no dialogue. In Jack, Jack was the only one that was quiet in a world full of eccentric and talkative people. But in this series, we're following Spear, a caveman who can't speak in a world full of dinosaurs and other fantastical creatures. So while Spear is on his way home, he hears a yell, and then he goes towards it, only to see the Tyrannosaurus devouring his family. This saddens and angers Spear. It was kinda hard to figure out what emotion he wanted to feel at first, because while he was sad, he even looked like he wanted to attempt to jump off a cliff to, you know, end, end, end it? But, like, at other times, it kind of looks like he's he's angry throughout it as well. I honestly have never seen another show like this. Like, just to let the action tell the story like this, like, imagine your family being, like, destroyed in front of you. Personally speaking, I wouldn't know how to feel. I'm angry that, you know, somebody destroyed them, but at the same time, I'm also sad that you know, they're, they're gone, so I, I completely relate and understand the feeling that Spear's feeling at this point. It's surprisingly very emotional. Afterwards, we cut forward to another scene of Spear um, fishing with this spear, but this time he only gets one and then he goes off to eat it, but that's when he hears, he hears that Tyrannosaurus yell and even though it's not the same Tyrannosaurus, this one's a female, he decides he's gonna go after it. He doesn't care. He wants all of them dead. He follows the creature home just to find out 
wait a second. This creature got all of his fish to to help his family out. Just like me? This confuses Spear, honestly speaking, and I think this was the perfect response for someone that was fully blinded with rage to have, like, you, you don't know how to take this, like, someone else has a family, you were just about to kill them, but then they would be in the same situation that you're in. But that's when one of the male Tyrannosaurus from before comes up and attacks the female Tyrannosaurus. Before Spear could come to any, like, mind-blowing resolutions, he does eventually end up helping out and fighting off the male Tyrannosaurus because those are the same race of Tyrannosaurus that took out his family. The fights that are in this episode, in this series even, they're both graphic and surreal at the same time. I mentioned this on our Scooge podcast episode of Primal. It's like, it's like you're watching a nature documentary or something on Animal Planet showing like how, how things just survive in the wild. After the fight cooled down, the little Tyranno kids ran up the spear and it was a little wholesome moment. He got to, you know, cuddle with them and stuff and everything was nice. It was his first time smiling since the opening scenes of the episode. But that smile would be short-lived due to the fact that there was another male Tyrannosaurus that showed up and kicked the mom Tyrannosaurus out of the way and then devoured the kids in front of them. The, the female Tyrannosaurus, she was shot. She was shot at, at what she just saw. So Spear ended up taking the initiative and that was honestly a pretty pretty good fight. Like These fight scenes are here are so good. And I don't know what happened. Like, like Spear... Oh, oh, I do know what happened. Spear speared the guy through his chestal area. Was it his heart? Was it his windpipe? I don't know. Somewhere in the chestal area that would kill him. With no one left, did nothing for them. Fang, the female Tyrannosaurus, and Spear, the young, big, gruffy caveman, they, they're all that's left together. They have this undying bond now since they both have suffered the same fate to the same people, basically. And that's basically the rest of the series, is them going through different trials and tribulations. How will they coexist with one being a caveman human and one being a gigantic Tyrannosaurus dinosaur? Whoa. Overall, I'm happy that my anticipation to watch the show didn't overshadow the beauty of this series. A man and his dinosaur. That should have been a tagline for this show, honestly. Depending on how you feel about these two and if you think they can carry like full episodes with no dialogue, it's up to you, and obviously if you connect to them on the first episode. Because the series structure is more episodic than you would think from the first episode, some episodes are amazing while others are decent to good, but that's the risk of anything that has an episodic um, structure. If it comes to what I recommend this show to you, I'd say yes, unless you are queasy at the sight of blood and graphic violence. and. Maybe not, but this show gets me excited for the future of adult animation, honestly speaking. Not everything has to be a comedy or be played for jokes. It's just, I don't know, just art that you can watch. And that's, that's the only way I can explain it, honestly speaking. But yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think about Primal if you've seen it in the comments down below. If you've only seen the first episode, tell me what you think about that. And again, we have done a Scooge podcast episode on this recently. So if you haven't already, go watch that because that was so fun to make and so much fun talking about the show. Oh my god. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.